Don't I take it personal? Long time that I'm searching. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? It's DJ Fazmo. Hello, it's Jamie here. And today we are doing something different. We went to this place in Guildford called El Shaddai, El Shaddai African Cuisine. All right now, they told me that you gotta get jollof rice with fish because it's from Sierra Leone. They invented it. That's what they said. I'm hearing too many conflicting stories, right? Um, I've got a lot of African acquaintances from West Africa specifically, and Nigerians say they invented jollof rice. Ghanaians say they invented it. People from Benin and Togo say they invented it. This is Sierra Leone, and they said they invented it. So we're gonna try it. This is the meal, All right? And if you can see it, meat and fish and jollof rice, salad and some sauce. And I've got some Trinidadian pepper sauce that I might use if it's not spicy enough. Show. Hey, I took the head. Uh, if you can see, it smells really good. And I'm drinking wine, surprise, surprise. And it's not white, I know it's got fish, but the red goes with the, the meat. Anyhow, I'm gonna try this. Let me try this meat first. That's good. I'm gonna use some pepper sauce. Mm. The meat's good. Smoky. What do you think that is? I don't know. I can't pick it. It's, it's smoky. It tastes, it tastes really good. Mm. I'm trying to pick the possible flavors in there, but it's, it's nice. It's a like dry seasoning. It's got bones. Hmm. Tasty. That is good. The jollof is really delicious. It actually doesn't. It doesn't taste too much different than the one we had at Little Lagos, which is a Nigerian restaurant in Newtown. Tastes quite similar. I'm gonna try a piece of fish. Mm. Mm -hmm. It has bones in it. It has bones in it, but I'm gonna remove them, but it's delicious. That's the fish head right there. That's good. It's crispy on the outside, but the fish is still um, nice on the inside. Not too dry. Uh oh. I like it. I like this. This is really good. Mm. Okay. Get in touch with my little African roots. <laughs> I'm from the. I'm from Suriname. And I have a, I'm a mix, a mixture of Indian from India, the subcontinent of India, and also I've got a. Turns out I have a, a percentage of um, African ancestry. So I've always had an affinity with African stuff. So yeah, African food it is today. But trust me, I love curry. <laughs> but I also love this. This is one of the things you have to use your hands for me. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. For me, I didn't say you. Oh. Relax. Uh -huh. Alright, so I figured the videos are kind of boring so of us just eating. I might start ask some questions. I went on to Google and see what's going on. Do you think, Jamie, you're old fashioned? Um. I guess it depends on kind of what you consider old-fashioned. Uh, yeah. I think that when it comes to kind of work life and family life, I'm a bit kind of old-fashioned and traditional. Like, you know, I, I like the safety of having my my job and, you know, family is important to me and stuff like that. So from that side, uh, I think I'm a little bit old-fashioned. But then when it comes to... I guess other parts of my personal life, like my, you know, my love of dancing and carnival and kind of 
getting out there in my costume and dancing about, then in that instance, I know a lot of people wouldn't think that I'm old fashioned. So it kind of, yeah. It's, it's hit or miss. It's, it's a change. Me, I'm old fashioned in, I think, um, manners as well in life, in general. Like saying hello to people. If people say hello to me, I'm quite easily to be, I'm quite polite about it. If people take the time out to, I want to talk to me, depending on the setting and scenario, I'm quite good at doing that. A lot of people, I think, in that setting, right, saying hello to me, for example, as an example, I know for a fact that I probably rubbed up people the wrong way. And certain examples with um, being nice and courteous and greeting and so forth. What's a social setting for some people is not a social setting for others, right? Like for me, I meet people when I'm working, I DJ. I go out when I'm working, I DJ at events, I DJ at, at uh, restaurants sometimes, I DJ at private functions and I meet people there. And I'm working in that capacity, so I don't have a lot of time to spend the talk, but because uh, I'm actually busy working, right? But then, if you say, "Hey, Farid, I know you were busy working. Let's meet outside. Let's schedule an appointment and we'll meet up and blah blah blah." Then good. I'm really courteous. All right. What's the next question? What are you listening to now in terms of music? So what am I listening to at the moment? Uh, as usual, circle. Um it's taken over my life in so many regards. Um, soka Soka and more Soka and your mixes and <laughs> that's about it. I uh, did did pick up my guitar recently because we have obviously a little bit of spare time on our hands. So I started listening to some of the um, kind of the older tunes from people like you know you know Led Zeppelin and your nineties sort of rock band alternative bands so listen to a little bit of that but no pretty much all, all soca and afro beats and the dance hall that you put out there so when you say soca has taken over your life what do you mean in what regards like um it's taken over every which way so no, for my i guess where i spend my time and what I want to do when it comes to traveling like it's always I'm factoring in you know there needs to be like a carnival or a soca or a fit or a something so so much of that kind of gets shaped is shaped by soca when it comes to even me working on my laptop having soca in my ears it's just um I know it puts me in a, a good good mood um there's something about the energy it's just it's a nice it's a nice energy and it's a, a just a wonderful distraction and something to like get involved in that way and then obviously the dancing and everything so it's kind of like from my fitness side of things what kind of dancing do you explain my dancing uh so soca fitness soca dance choreography uh is what i've been teaching for the last uh, number of years like before that i was doing some uh latin and a variety of different styles but Again, after experiencing Carnival in Trinidad for the first time, everything pretty much started to revolve around Soka. It just something hooked me, and that's it. Okay. So I listen to Soka music, dance music. I'm starting to listen to Afrobeats music more and more and more. I love Soka music, compa. I love the French styles. But I listen to a lot of stuff, but... Those, those, those genres, aforementioned genres, is something that I really listen to. Right now, we're all locked down. Do you miss anything? If there's one thing you miss from regular life, what is it that you miss? Uh, one thing that I miss, because everything else I've had, like my daily coffee I've been able to get and the rest of it, and that's like my, my must-do, but the one thing that I miss is actually getting out and teaching classes every week. Um, it puts, it's just, it puts me in a fantastic mood, irrespective of what happens in my day job. Um, it's so good to have other people kind of experience soca and walk away from the class kind of sweating and smiling and stuff. And that's something that I haven't had the chance for the last, God, two months. 
to, to do. And yeah, despite, you know, putting up some lessons uh, online for people, you don't get to feel feel that energy um, of people. And yeah, I've, I've been mi- missing that kind of side of the, the, the social aspect, I guess, um, of, of classes and the, the fitness side of things. So yeah, that's what I've been missing. Anything else? Um, well, our, my once a month getting out and having a dance at prescription and even the regular like Sundays uh, that you were playing at, that was really nice to kind of get out and about and yeah, all that side of thing sort of stopped. Um, but they're the main things. Everything else I've been able to kind of keep up still able to dance here and you know do a little bit of stretching and physical activity um still working going out getting out take out um so yeah pretty much well this is really good yeah so something that i miss is probably like djing i used to dj regularly i would say four or five times a week now I do that as well, but just not for anybody. Like I said, I think I said mentioned this previously, but you get energy from people in the crowd, and even if I DJ in um, a class or something, there's an energy. You pick it up from people. People reciprocate energy, and that that element's gone. It's no longer so. That's something that I really, really miss. I mean, about the it's the DJing part, being able to show music. New, new songs from across the world in terms of soca music and Caribbean music in general. So yeah, that's something that I miss. How the how about all those people that is their birthday during this COVID? Now, same with you. You couldn't do it. Actually, the week of the weekend of your birthday. Yeah. We were still allowed out. Barely, but yeah. No, we we're allowed out. The only people that were getting quarantined were the people coming back into the country. And then, and then the following week, literally the following, probably the following day, everyone was told to stay home. It didn't feel like I really celebrated my birthday, you see, because we had plans. We, we came back and we were going to have the first prescription coming back after carnival and that had to get cancelled because of the whole COVID and yeah. it was also like another friend, Danielle's birthday and we are going to go out and dance and have some fun and that didn't happen. So it kind of feels like... My birthday didn't happen, in a way. It came in so, life. I reckon there should be a big birthday prescription. As soon as this thing gets this locked off, or we get back up, a big birthday prescription for all the birthdays that we missed in 2020. That's a good idea. Yeah. If you had your birthday during COVID, and you live in Sydney, and you want to come and party, and you want to release all your stress and your troubles, We'll do a birthday celebration, a big birthday bash for everybody whose birthday it was during COVID. And this food is so good, it's so filling. It's quite expensive, but it is fresh food, mm. right? It's not, um, what would you call that? Like processed food. It's a whole fish. You're getting a whole tilapia. And the tilapia is bigger than the box, but the cup cut it in half, right? And you're getting you know, a lot of meat. You could share it. For total total cost, fifty-five dollars. We went to another one and we paid for less food, we paid what's less food? That was less food. You good? Yeah, it was one container of rice. Oh yeah, for the meat. Yeah. For less food, pay 60 bucks. It's tasty, but starts to get a bit expensive. Like, uh, it's hard to just buy that to take out. Yeah, it's quite expensive. It's like, because there's not a lot of um, Caribbean or African or peoples in Australia, like the food is not uh, readily available. So therefore it becomes, um, I think, what do you call that? An item, a luxury item, mm-hmm. and then they, they charge luxury prices. But this is quite good. Mm. Yeah, it's not cheap, but there's um, 
There's, there's a menu. Like, there's a menu. Right, this, is, this is in Guildford. So you get out of Guildford Station, if you're catching a public transport or you drive to Guildford Station, ask anyone. Where the African restaurant is, there's only one. And then, yeah. That's good. Again, this is like 10 minutes from my house. Season. I'm really getting becoming a fan of Jollof rice. Initially, when I had it, I was like, I'm just tasting tomato, but now I taste the nuances. This one, this one, is really similar to the Nigerian one I had at Newtown. I've had ones that are bland. This one's good. If you could wish anything, or do anything, what would it be? Wish anything. Hmm. It's so conflicted, right? Because usually you'd be like, oh, I want a million dollars. I want never ending supply of wealth or money. But right now, that doesn't mean shit. <laughs> you can't go anywhere. You can't do anything. You can't like go, hey, let me go and pay ten thousand dollars to leave the country, and then you have to go and wait and do a process just to be able to leave the country. And then probably when you reach another place, you don't have to do quarantine. Like, yeah. Unless you had so much money, you could buy your own island and fly yourself there with a jet plane that you buy, or a helicopter, and be away from everyone. Um, I reckon just for a bit. A lot of people have been doing home improvement. Cleaning up the, the, the hardware stores. Fixing home, fixing stuff at home. So that they can live, live a little bit better at home. Mm. Alright, I can't finish. Jamie can't finish. But the food was good. I went and cut it short. That's it. We'll see you next time.